One of the most frequently asked questions on this channel is how to convert temperature anomaly data to degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit. This is the answer for the Celsius conversion. But on the assumption that you will want to check the logic behind this formula, there now follows a demonstration on where to locate the popular data sources, the data download links and the supporting conversion methodology. There are a few basic facts we need to understand in order to convert climate data expressed as anomalies into the more familiar Celsius and Fahrenheit measurements. Anomalies are usually stored in degrees Celsius relative to a base period. The average of each base period is by definition zero. The GISS base period is the average of 1951 to 1980. The Hardcourt IV base period is the average of 1961 to 1990, while the NOAA base period is the 20th century average, that is 1901 to 2000. How to align these different base periods will be demonstrated. There are various methods that can be employed for conversion. The method to be demonstrated will be based on the premise that the average global temperature for the GISS base period 1951 to 1980 is approximately 14 degrees Celsius. Please note that the Fahrenheit figure in this quote was originally rounded down. So to be precise, it is 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit and 14 degrees Celsius. The method will be demonstrated in three steps. First, GISS anomaly data will be loaded and converted to Celsius and Fahrenheit. Then, Hadcroft 4 anomaly data will be loaded and converted to Celsius, leaving you to convert to Fahrenheit if you wish. Finally, NOAA anomaly data will be loaded and converted to Celsius, again leaving the simple Fahrenheit conversion to you. The method is subject to falsifiability. In all cases after conversion, the average temperature for the period 1951 to 1980 must be equal to 14 degrees Celsius or 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit, whatever the source. First, GISS. To download the GISS data, you go to the GISS website. You can see the website address. You obtain the data by clicking on either text or CSV. I use CSV, but there is no difference. Up to you. You are interested in this column, January to December, marked JD. This is the annual anomaly data in degrees Celsius. For ease of demonstration, I created a new column next to the year column. I then copied the data from the original January to December column into this new column. To check accuracy, the average of the period 1951 to 1980 should be zero to two decimal places. And so it is. You now rely on the initial premise. The average temperature for 1951 to 1980 is 14 degrees Celsius. So the conversion becomes simple. Create a new column, Celsius. Then populate the Celsius column by adding 14 to the January to December value for each year. This effectively sets the average temperature for the period 1951 to 1980 to equal 14 degrees Celsius and proportions all other years accordingly. You need to check that. And as you can see, the average for the period 1951 to 1980 does indeed equal 14 to two decimal places. 
So the conversion to Celsius is complete. You can now create a new column for Fahrenheit. Use this formula to convert the Fahrenheit column from the Celsius column. You will get this result. The formula is circled. And to confirm the result, the average of the period 1951 to 1980 does equal 57.2 degrees Fahrenheit, as required. You now have a spreadsheet showing global average temperature from 1880 to 2019 in degrees Fahrenheit, degrees Celsius and anomalies in degrees Celsius. You can now turn your attention to the Hadcrit 4 data. This is where you will encounter the issue of different base periods. This is the website. Go here to download data. Then click on this link, Global Annual. This is the data loaded into an Excel spreadsheet. You need these two columns. Column one is the year, Column 2 is the anomaly data in degrees Celsius. The Hadcrit 4 base period is 1961 to 1990. The average for that period should therefore be equal to zero, two, two decimal places. And it is. We now need to align Hadcrit 4 with GISS. The Hadcrit 4 average anomaly for the GISS base period 51 to 1980 is not equal to zero. It is equal to minus 0 0.056, rounding up the last digit. So, for the period 1951 to 1980, Hadcrit 4 anomaly is 0.056 degrees Celsius less than GISS anomaly. To align Hadcrit 4 anomaly with GISS anomaly, you must add 0.056 to the Hadcrit 4 anomaly value. To convert the result to Celsius, you simply add 14. Therefore, Hadcrit 4 Celsius equals Hadcrit 4 anomaly plus 0 0.056 plus 14, which in turn equals Hadcrit 4 anomaly plus 14.056. This becomes the simple conversion rule. You can now apply it. Create a new column, which will be the Celsius column. Then populate the Celsius column by adding 14.056 to the column 2 anomaly value for each year. This effectively sets the average temperature of the period 1951 to 1980 to equal 14 degrees Celsius and proportions all other years accordingly. Check in the period 1951 to 1980. You will see that the average of that period is now equal to 14 degrees Celsius. You have a spreadsheet showing degrees Celsius for the entire period 1850 to 2019. Moving to NOAA, you can now apply the same method to NOAA's anomaly data. This is the website URL. This is the tool you will use to generate the data with the exact parameters as seen. Press plot. This will generate a graph and the anomaly data. Here are the links to download the data. NOAA data is nicely simple with just the two columns. 
You can verify that the average anomaly 1901 to 2000 is zero to three decimal places, as expected. Like before with Hartrett 4, we must now determine the NOAA average for 1951 to 1980 in order to align with GISS. It is plus 0 0.039, truncated to three decimal places. So for the period 1951 to 1980, NOAA anomaly is 0.039 degrees Celsius more than GISS anomaly. To align NOAA anomaly with GISS anomaly, you must therefore subtract 0.039 from the NOAA anomaly value. To convert the result to Celsius, you simply add 14. Therefore, NOAA Celsius equals NOAA anomaly minus 0 0.039 plus 14, which in turn equals NOAA anomaly plus 13.961. The conversion rule is this. Again, you can now apply it. Create a new column, which will be the Celsius column. Then populate the Celsius column by adding 13.961 to the anomaly column value for each year. This effectively sets the average temperature of the period 1951 to 1980 to equal 14 degrees Celsius and proportions all other years accordingly. You now need to check the average for 1951 to 1980 and it is 14 degrees two three decimal places, as required. And so, you have now NOAA data in degrees Celsius and anomalies. The conversion to Fahrenheit will be straightforward. I hope this video proves to be useful.